The two young girls in question are called Pamela Sue Wells and Nancy Helen Trotter. They know that they only just escaped a perverted killer. After arresting Schaefer, Robert Crowder wants to understand what took place. He orders a reconstruction with the two young girls. What he discovers chills him to the bone. Taken to the undergrowth outside of town, Schaefer decides first to gag the two young girls before attaching their limbs, putting a rope around their necks and tying them to a tree. And then Schaefer announces that he's leaving, that he has an errand to run, but he'll be back to finish the job. He tells them he's going to kill them, but first he's going to torture them. But in his absence, the two girls free themselves and run away. The girls told me basically the same story that Schaefer had told about meeting and, and then being picked up the next day. And uh, uh, he had also, they said, had uh, pinched them on the buttocks and uh, touched them in other ways. I don't remember exactly how it was all described. But then they began to get frightened uh, when he tied them up and then uh, drove off. Schaefer is then arrested by his boss. A new fact then comes to light that will unmask him completely. Two bodies are found around Vero Beach, in Fort Pierce to be precise. Robert Stone is the prosecutor at Schaefer's trial, which begins in October 1973. First, we realized we might have a, a murderer. It was when uh, some old man was going through the underbrush looking for tin cans, aluminum cans, and he found a, a bone that he thought might be human. So the police went there and searched the area and found the remains of two people, two humans. They found a skull and scattered teeth. And uh, almost at the exact same time, uh, a mother of one of the girls who had been missing since September of 72 was going through the county and she noticed the license plates so she went to the uh, tax office to find out if the plate number she had if there was such a person in in that county and in fact it belonged to Gerard Schaefer who was in jail Schaefer's apartment is searched, and what the police discover there is the final confirmation for them that he is guilty. He kept souvenirs of all of his victims, and we found a little jewelry box that had souvenirs of several girls that had been missing in Broward County, which is a county south of here, uh, and we knew that he probably killed those people too. During the search, in addition to jewelry belonging to the victims, the police find photos that the killer took himself before and after the murders. As in the case of Pamela Wells and Nancy Trotter, Schaefer uses the same modus operandi when he kidnaps Susan Place and Georgia Jessup. He takes the two young girls by force to the woods near some swamps that border the ocean. He chooses a clearing situated in the middle of the swamps, a few hundred meters away from the road and hidden from view. He binds them and ties them to trees. He'd make them drink alcohol, try to get them, you know, drunk, we'd photograph them, and he'd he would love to see them urinate, and because uh, when they're hanging there, that that gave him a big charge, and uh, uh, he he just wanted to do everything he could to hum humiliate the women. The ritual is probably linked to the pleasure taken in domination. 
Moreover, the attack is usually done with a knife because then there's physical contact with the victims. So either with a knife or strangulation or even suffocation. So the victims are touched. And of course, he makes them suffer slowly. And the slowness is part of the ritual. And then after he killed them, he would, uh, you know, have sex with them as long as they were able before they started decaying. And then he would mutilate them and he would masturbate over their bones.